toned paper is a really popular type of paper for artists to draw on and I'm finding myself using toned paper a lot more in my drawings. It can be really tricky to get your head round drawing on different toned paper as the most common colour of paper is just standard white paper. So to get the best results on toned paper I'm sharing some really helpful tips and things that I have learnt over the last few months. I'll be using two different coloured toned papers in this video. I have the toned tan and toned grey paper by Strathmore. I'm also using the Prismacolor Premier pencils for this demonstration, but any coloured pencil brands work well with toned paper. I've picked a selection of colours that I feel are best suited for using on toned paper and I've tried to pick colours within a 5 value scale and I'll talk a little bit more about the value scale that I use for this drawing on toned paper later on in the video. I think the biggest problem for artists drawing on toned paper is that the toned paper falls into a mid value. If you are working on white paper, which is the most common paper to draw on, then the white paper is the lightest value and you build up all of your shading, tone, shadows and dark values on the white paper. Toned paper is not the lightest value, so you're going to need to add in your lightest and darkest values. This can lead artists to overthinking drawing on toned paper or avoiding drawing on toned paper altogether because they are so used to drawing on white paper. The biggest tip I have for simplifying things and making it so much easier to draw on toned paper is by concentrating on the lightest values, so the highlights of a drawing, and the darkest values, so any shadows, outlines, or defining features. This will help the toned paper act as the midtones in combination with the lightest and darkest areas. So now let's talk about the five value scale I mentioned earlier. I like to use a five value scale to really focus on the different values and stages of a drawing. And I also find using a five value scale instead of say a 10 value scale is a lot easier to understand. My five value scale goes as follows. Value one is my lightest value and is often the highlights of a drawing. So for example, highlights in the eye and any light source on a subject. Value 2 is my light areas. They have more tone and shading than the highlights but still fall into the lightest shades of colour. Lightest values in a drawing will often be areas of a drawing where there is a light source. So for example areas of a child's face that is facing the light source. Value 3 is our toned paper. The toned paper acts as the mid value because it is neither the lightest or darkest parts of a drawing. The toned paper is really important for transitioning from the lightest to the darkest areas and adding midtones for depth and dimension to drawings. Value 4 is shadows. Shadows are really important in drawings because they add a lot of depth into drawings. Without shadows, drawings would look very flat and unnatural, so it's really important to add them in. Finally, value 5 is our darkest values, and darkest values are really important for definition and contrast. Dark values really help to bring a drawing forward and make it pop and stand out. It's really important to include all five values within a drawing so that the drawing looks three dimensional and there is that contrast and transition between different areas. Pencil pressure is also extremely important for drawing on toned paper because the way you use your pencils will determine how much of the toned paper you will allow to show through your drawing or how much paper you cover up. For value 1 which is the highlights and value 5 which is the darkest values, I often use a lot of pressure onto the paper to make sure those areas are really defined and intense. To apply a lot of pressure I will hold the pencil close to the tip and apply a firm pressure to the paper. As I go through the value scale and get closer to value 3, which is our toned paper, I start lightening the pressure on the pencil. For value 2, which is the lightest tones, and value 4, which is our shadows, I don't cover all of the paper grain. I still allow the toned paper to show through so that it transitions in nicely with the areas I'm not adding coloured pencils to. 
For areas that I'm avoiding using coloured pencils, I hold the pencil closer to the end of the pencil and that just means that I have a lot less control over the pencil pressure so that more of the toned paper can show through. So if we work through the value scale, I apply a heavy pressure for my highlighted areas, moderate pressure for lighter areas but still allowing the toned paper to show through, avoiding pencils for our mid-tones to allow the toned paper to act as the mid-tones, a moderate pressure for shadows and a heavy pressure to block in our darkest values. So to see how the value scale works, I've drawn a circle and I'm using a white pencil for the highlights, a beige colour for the lightest areas, no colour for the mid-tone, a dark brown for shadows and black for the darkest colours and those are the colours I am using on the toned tan paper. I'm also using a white pencil for the highlights, a light grey for lightest areas, no pencil for mid-tones, a dark grey for the shadows and a black pencil for the darkest values on the toned grey paper. What I start by doing is blocking in the highlighted areas of the circle, so for example a small highlight in the centre of the circle, I then transition into the light tones so incorporating light values and I then transition the light values into the toned paper by gently easing off the pencil pressure and allowing the toned paper to show through. The toned paper acts as our mid-tones so in between the light and dark tones. Then I start to shade in my shadowed colour and I gradually increase the pressure going from the mid-tone to the toned paper into the darkest values. Finally, I add my darkest values by applying a heavy pressure and burnishing the values into the paper. By gradually increasing and decreasing pressure, it really helps to create that three-dimensional look. There's a lot of depth in the drawing, there's contrast between areas, there's transition from one area into another, and we have all five core values in this drawing. It's also not essential to work from the lightest to dark tones because we're starting with the lightest value being the paper. So if you wanted to, you can work from dark to light. So starting by blocking in the darkest values and then shading in some lighter tones. Tone paper is definitely a more relaxed approach to drawing. Also, it's really important that you remember reflected light in your drawings as well. So those are a sort of grade four value on the scale and they will be to accompany the darkest values. So that is it for today's video. I hope you picked up lots of helpful tips for how to draw on toned paper and how to get the best results for drawing on toned paper. Let me know if you have any other tips for drawing on toned paper by leaving a comment down below. If you are new around here, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you never miss an update from me. I upload art videos every single week and I'd love to have you around. As always, I'll be back very soon with another video, so take care and keep on creating. Bye guys.